let's learn how objects from one file can get to another. At some point, hopefully, you'll make something that you want to save. In this case, let's just make a masterpiece by rotating our cube. Well, saving is pretty easy. Thankfully, we can just go to File and Save. If we haven't saved it yet, then that will bring up Blender's file browser, and we can navigate to where we want to save it, and then call it whatever we'd like. Hit Enter or click Save, and you're good to go. Then after you make any other change, you can always save by hitting Control S. One thing that's important to know about Blender files, though, is that the UI layout gets saved as well. For example, if I drag up my timeline here, and maybe split into two 3D views, and then hit Control Save, then if I go to File and New, make a new file, and then go to File, this time I'll just go to Open Recent, and open that file up, then I'll open it exactly the same way that I left it. This is really nice because different projects often require different layouts, but sometimes it's not that helpful. For example, if you download a file from somebody online or open up a file saved in a really old version of Blender, then the UI might be kind of weird and not what you want to work with. Or maybe you've accidentally changed the UI in a way and you're not quite sure how to get back, but you don't want to start over on your file. Well, that's pretty easy. Here, I'll just open up a new scene again. So we're back to the default layout and then I can go to File and Open. I'll navigate to that file, but this time before opening, I'll go over to the gear icon in the top right of the file browser and uncheck Load UI. Once I do that, then it'll open up the file, but without changing our interface. Now let's say we're working, working, working in Blender, and we do something to make Blender crash. Luckily, this doesn't happen very often, but when it does, you can almost always get your work back through the autosave feature. Just go to File, Recover, and Autosave. Open that up and you can see where all of your autosaves are in your temp folder. Sort by date modified and pick the one that was saved at the right time. You can change how often Blender autosaves by going to Edit and Preferences, down to Save and Load, up to Autosave, and change the number of minutes. Above that, you'll also see that there's a thing called Save Versions. And if we go to File and Open, we'll only see our one file just like we saved it. But if I uncheck the filter icon so that it's not just filtering by .blend files, then I'll see this second file called a .blend1, and the icon looks like a ghost version of a Blender file. What Blender does when it saves is that it kicks the previous save over to a .blend1, and if you have two save versions, then it'll kick the other one over to a .blend2 and so on. So every time you save, each one gets bumped down the list. We can open this .blend1 just like any other .blend, and now we're back to where we were before we made that previous change and then saved. Now all of these Blend 1 and Blend 2 files can clutter up your system and take up a lot of space, so I'd recommend deleting them once you've fully finished with your project. Now I'm kind of bored of looking at this default cube this whole time, so I'll go to File and Open, and if you're watching this course on cgcookie.com, you can download the source files, and included in that is going to be GameDevicePreview.Blend. Double click on that, and you'll see a preview of the exact object that you're going to create with me in the next course if you decide to continue following along. That one's called Press Start, and it's also free. And it'll also serve as a good example of how to get something from one Blend file to another. The first way is just through copy and pasting. Blender has its own paste buffer on your system, so if you select some objects, in this case I'll go to the Game Device Collection, right-click and choose Select Objects, and then in the 3D viewport, I'll just hit Control c to copy. Down in the status bar, it tells me that it's copied 10 objects, and then I can go to File and New, I'll select everything and delete, and then just hit Control V to paste. So this works across any Blender instance that you have, just know that you have to be using the same Blender version. So if I copy this in Blender 4.0, I can't then paste it into Blender 3.6, but if it's a minor version like Blender 4.0.1 versus Blender 4.0.2, then that's not a problem. Now, if you don't want to have to open up your other file first and select all of your objects and all of that, then you can do this same thing by appending. I'll hit Control Z to undo that paste, and then I'll go to File and down to Append. I'll navigate to the same file, and I'll double click it. That'll actually bring us inside the file and we can see all of the data that's stored inside. If I go to Object, then I can select any or as many of these objects as I want, but this time I'll go back up a folder, go to Collection, and choose the entire game device collection. Double click on that, and now that's brought that into Blender. I could work with these objects just as usual. Hit tab to go into edit mode, change the materials, whatever else I need to do. The other way of bringing things into Blender is a little bit different, and that's called linking. If instead I go to file and link, it'll bring up the file browser just like before, and I'll double click on the game device just like before, but now it's brought it in a little bit differently. 
there are these big axes and I can move it around and rotate it and scale it, but I can't do anything else. I can't select the objects individually or edit it in any way. That's because all these objects are still linked to the other file. If I were to make a change in that original file and then open up this file again, then I'd see all of those changes reflected here as well. That way I can have individual files for individual assets, but collect them all together in the same scene in another file. If you're totally new to 3D, then I wouldn't worry about this at all, but it's really important for people who want to use Blender in different types of productions. Oftentimes it's helpful to override just some of the properties from the other file, and to do that, then you can go to Object, Library Override, and click Make. Now we can actually see these objects individually, and I can move them and rotate them separately, but I can't go into edit mode. I can't edit the materials or any of the data. And then any of the properties that we did change are going to be colored teal. That means that they're overridden. And this little icon on the right tells us that as well. If I right click on the values, then I can remove those overrides and it'll go back to its default. Now, if I have some library overrides that are linked in from another file, but I decide that I want to make a full copy and I don't want them to be linked anymore, then I can go to objects, relations, make local, and all. Now I can edit this exactly the same as if it was appended. All right, so that was maybe more for the technical users, but this next part is going to be really important for everybody. If I go up to the solid shaded view settings and set the color to texture, then we'll see that I actually have a texture here on the game cartridge. But when it comes to images and videos and things like that, Blender isn't storing them in the file itself. It's just referencing it from wherever it is on your computer. So if you were to delete the original file or move it in any way, then it'll show up as a bright pink error. So if you're going to send your blend file to somebody else or send it to another computer, what you always want to remember to do is to go to File, down to External Data, which refers to anything that's not saved within Blender itself, like textures and videos, then click on Pack Resources. That will save those textures into the blend file itself so that you can send the blend file and everything else will be fine. Alternatively, if you have a textures folder right next to your blend file, then you can choose Make All Paths Relative, and that way Blender knows where those textures are in relation to the blend file and not an absolute path on your computer. That way you can send that entire folder to somebody else and all of those textures will still show up when they open the file. So we'll go over how Blender handles images a lot more in the fundamentals of texturing, but just for now, remember that if you're using textures and you want to send your file to somebody else, always pack resources. This can make the file take up a lot of extra space though, so you can always unpack when you're finished. And that's the ins and outs of working with Blender files. For the most part though, if you can hit Control S to save and can copy and paste and can open files just fine, then you're ready to start your own projects.